Tomorrow we will run. Yesterday we ran. Today we talk about tense and the different possible ways that languages can meaningfully refer to events in time. This is the Linguistics Podcast. Questions or comments can be directed to Twitter at linguistchris or via email to linguistchris at gmail.com. Welcome to the Linguistics Podcast. My name is Chris, and today, as I said, we are uh, talking about tense and different ways that languages can meaningfully refer to events in time. Um, This is partly based on a listener's suggestion. The suggestion was that we look at um, issues in linguistics that describe possible human languages. That is to say, we look at all the variation across languages and we see, um, for some particular subdomain, what possible features can exist. Um, So in that vein, uh, that is how I will be approaching tense. I'll be looking at it from uh, not necessarily a language-specific standpoint, but uh, the standpoint of what possible ways do languages, um, you know, refer to events in the past or the present or the future, and what are the logical ways of splitting these things up? What what possibilities exist for that? Before I get started, I want to mention, this is episode 25, um, I am currently reading some research regarding um, a discussion I had on Twitter with a listener um, who took issue with um, the way I was talking in the uh, computational linguistics episode concerning principled models of language. Um, and I basically mentioned that uh, models that were based on statistical methods were less principled than models based on traditional rule-based approaches. Um, and he took some great issue with that, and um, I, th- I think we ended up coming to a, a kind of tacit agreement. Um, but I wanted to re-examine that issue and sort of give a little bit more detail, and he sent me some, some references to read through, and I'm uh, still currently reading through those. So one of the upcoming episodes will will cover that. So I'm going to go into more detail into some of the computational stuff and um, sort of reiterate exactly what I meant uh, when I said that the only principled models were rule-based models. Um, so that is coming soon. Also, one other issue I want to throw out there, um, it's always a challenge. Well, not always a challenge, but sometimes a challenge. Um, doing this podcast, uh, because it is audio only and I don't have a way to uh, illustrate visually any linguistic issues, and that can be helpful um, depending upon the topic. Um, so I have been considering uh, making a, a video version, at least for a couple podcasts, um, that I would likely just make available on YouTube. Um, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't uh, you know, I wouldn't be able to upload it in the same way as I upload uh, my audio podcast just because of restrictions that I have on my end uh, with the uh, particular server that I use. Um, But I could make some, let's call them video supplements to certain topics that I've already covered in the podcast that I want to cover in more detail, um, but that I really can't do that much detail on without a, a visual component. So I wanted to get feedback. Would that be something that people would be interested in if I did a, a sort of video um, a, a, a revisit some topics using video um, in, in a way that uh, I think would be novel compared to the other ways that I've gone about it so far. So feedback on that via Twitter or email. Um, is it something you'd be interested in? Do you think it would be helpful? So on and so forth. I know a lot of people listen to this podcast in the car, um, so that, you know, a video supplement really wouldn't be helpful in that regard. But anyway, that's why I want to get your feedback. So without further ado, let us let us go into uh, tense. So first, what is tense? Well, tense is a way of encoding um, the time of something being referred to. All right, so if I say, we talk about... Um, well, that's that's actually a bad example because of how English encodes its tense. Um, we are talking about tense. If I say we are talking, that means that right now, at this present moment, we're talking. The talk action is currently going on. We are talking about tense. Um, if I say we will talk about tense, then implicit in that is that we are not talking about tense currently. That is the, the, the typical interpretation. If I say we will talk about tense, I mean we're not talking about it right now. 
Otherwise, I would say we will continue talking about tense, or I would add something to that phrase so that you know that, in fact, we are already talking about tense, and we will continue to talk about tense. If I say we talked about tense, that t at the end of talk, we talked about tense, that marker shows you that this event happened in the past. Right? This is something that is not currently going on. It's not going to go on in the future. It's something that happened before. And there's other, you know, more fine-grained distinctions uh, in the English tense system. So I could say, uh, we had talked about tense, but not for a long time. Right? I could say something like that. So I could, uh, I could manipulate the distance between uh, the the current state of affairs, where I'm speaking, the point in time that I'm speaking to you, and when this action took place. Okay, so that's just a taste of some of the possibilities with tense distinctions, but let me put them in more formal terms, uh, simple but formal terms. So, first, the present tense. Okay, the present tense indicates that whatever you're discussing, whatever action you're discussing is taking place currently. Um, in English, it's typically... Um, well, let me, let me leave the, the marking out for now, because I want to stay a little bit more general before I get into, into more specific terms. So let me leave the marking out. So present tense, in general terms, would be something that you would expect any language to have. Why? Well, let's think about the usefulness of discussing something going on currently versus going on in the future versus going on in the past. If you had to pick one of those three, which one would you pick? Well, clearly the present. You want to be able to discuss things that are currently happening. That's going to be the most useful in terms of just basic communication, is you're going to want to be able to discuss what's going on right now. right? So, I'm talking about tense. You are walking. He's running. Um, you know, my mother is on the way. You know, whatever you want to say um, in the present tense is very, very useful. And more useful, typically, than future or past tense. Um, but implicit in that statement is the fact that you can have past or future tense. So past tense indicates that whatever you are talking about in that tense has occurred bef before you are discussing it. Right. So before the statement, you're making something happen. And likewise, future tense means that after the statement you're making, something will happen. Now, let's stick with those three, present, past, and future, for a second. Um, do languages have to make distinctions between these three basic tenses? In fact, they do not. Um, so now we get into a little bit more language-specific information. Let's think about English first. Now, if I want to say something in the present tense in English, I just say, we talk or we are talking. That's a, a version of the present tense called the progressive, the we are talking. Um, and it's something that some languages don't make a distinction of, but it's still a kind of present tense. All right, it's it's some it, you're discussing an action that's currently taking place. So I could say we talk, we are talking. Those are both versions of a present tense. Now, like I said, past tense in English, we add a little morphological marker, a a d or a t or a id. Um, so you get things like we talked, we walked. Sometimes you get an irregular past tense, we ran instead of we run. Um, so that's the way you would mark it in English. Now, in the future tense, uh, we don't have a morphological future tense in that we don't have a single marker in English that we add to represent, uh, to, to, to refer to an event that is going to happen in the future. Uh, to the contrary, we add an auxiliary. So we say something like, we will run in the future. We will talk about tense. Um, you know, will is, is kind of the most common um, verb that you can use for that, although there are um, some others. You can use modals to indicate that something um, could or could not happen in the future. So you're still referring to a, an event in the future. If you say something like, we might go to the store, um, that go to the store if it occurs, will be in the future. Okay, so you're still using a kind of tense distinction there with, with modal auxiliaries. Um, other languages will differ with how they represent these things. So if you know French, for example, French has a morphological past tense and a morphological future tense. And in fact, it's more complex than that, but I'll just go that far. Um, um, German does not have a morphological future tense, but does have a morphological past tense, but it lacks 
the sort of present versus progressive distinction that English has. So, um, you know, um, is, is the same as, as we talk and we are talking in German. It, it, there's no distinction between those two. Wir denken, we think and we are thinking, no distinction. Um, so that's very interesting uh, difference between uh, English and German, which are two very closely related languages, but they they also differ in the way that they represent tense. And like I said, French and English and, and many other languages. Um, if you go to the World Atlas of Language Structures, um, past tense and future tense are two features that they have listings on. And you find that there are a great number of languages that lack a future uh, an inflectional future tense and an inflectional past tense. Um, so inflectional future tense, like we already said, um, English lacks it, German lacks it. In order to denote future tense in these languages, you have to use some kind of auxiliary verb. Um, likewise, Icelandic, Indonesian, Japanese, um, all Malagasy. I mean, there's tons and tons of languages that, that lack inflectional future tense. Inflectional past tense, we find Cantonese, um, Laxit, uh, Greenlandic, Hausa, Indonesian, Javanese. Um, now, notice that these aren't all the same languages that are lacking the future tense. Okay, so you have a mismatch. Some languages will have past tense but no future tense. Japanese, for example, has an inflectional past tense but no inflectional future tense. English has an inflectional past tense but no inflectional future tense. German, same way. Um, so, there's already something interesting going on where languages will differ with how they differentiate tense, the methods that you have to use to get these tenses across. Um, note, however, that all these languages will typically have some method for denoting at least these three tenses. Even in things like Cantonese, which don't have an inflectional future tense or an inflectional past tense, they still have words, for example, for yesterday. So you say something the equivalent of yesterday we think something, something, something. What you're really saying is that you thought something, 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 something. That's the, the meaning that is brought across by using those kind of structures. But the fact is that they lack a, an inflection for showing those particular tenses. Um, so with those three basic tenses in mind, there's still more that we can say if we want to be general. Um, so currently we've been working with the frame of reference of the speaker. Okay, so you have... Three possible distinctions, let's say, uh, basic distinctions from the frame of reference of speaker. Either what I'm talking about is currently happening, what I'm talking about happened in the past, or what I'm talking about will happen in the future. Um, but there is another possibility, and that is you could reference uh, something uh, in relation to another event. Uh, so it is theoretically possible that I could have a future tense based not on when I'm talking to you about it, but based upon some other event. Um, so let's say the event is a week from now. I have something going on. Let's say it's a party. There are some languages in which I could have a different tense referring to the future with regards to the party, so something further than a week from now, um, in contrast to the future in relation to when I'm speaking. Okay, so that would be the difference between what is sometimes referred to as an absolute tense and a relative tense. So I could have a whole tense system relative to the party. So present tense at the party, past tense uh, before the party, future tense after the party, the party being a week from now, versus um, those same three distinctions based on me speaking, the absolute tense. Um, and certainly I'm sure there are some languages out there that have, you know, six possibilities. Um, so you can use either the relative or the absolute. Um, I mean, these are all logical possibilities that could be out there. Um, going a little bit further, uh, and I suppose slightly related to that, um, you have something known as degree of remoteness. Um, so this is um, the logical possibility that you will change the resolution by which you refer to these events. So future tense essentially is any time in the future from either now or from some other event, depending if I'm using absolute or relative tense. Um, but it is possible that I could use a different type of marking to refute, to refer to the near future versus the distant 
future or the near past versus the distant past. Um, now, we don't have a difference in past tense marking for this, but we do have things like recently. Recently, I, past tense, which indicates that it's not something that happened a long time ago. It's something that happened very recently in the near past. Um, we, we sort of, I think, lack um, that distinction for near future, but of course we can, we can limit our, our future tense, the resolution of our future tense, by, by qualifying it with something like tomorrow. Tomorrow I will walk to the store, not necessarily two days from now. Um, so, I mean, these are all kind of possible distinctions that you have in tense, and in fact, uh, it, it really can get very, very fine-grained if you consider that you can have you know, near future tense to an event that takes place at some other time. You can also have tenses that will, in principle, refer to um, the time span between two events. So if, if I'm using a relative tense between um, you know, something that happened a week ago and now, I could have a whole morphological system that just applies to that area in between that event and now. Um, I, I mean, these are possibilities um, that languages uh, could use for their tense systems. And, uh, you know, the take-home message is that languages will differ with what tense systems they use. But the tense possibilities themselves are absolute. This is this is the kind of approach I'm taking to this episode and to a couple of future episodes. Um, I mean, these are, these are logical possibilities for tense, not necessarily represented possibilities. Um, one other possibility is, is that of negation of these tenses. So, you know, we have present tense. It is possible to have a tense system that is non-present. That is to say that you would mark something that's going on in the future or that went on in the past with the same type of morphological marker, um, simply saying that it's not going on right now. Certainly there are languages which do that. Um, and likewise, you could negate, you know, non-future is a possible tense. Non-past is a possible tense. So this is actually a very complex issue. It's not simply saying, oh, you know, this language has a future tense and a past tense, and boom, it's done. Uh, there are many, many fine-grained distinctions that can be made regarding temporal space uh, in languages. And it's really quite fascinating to see how languages encode this temporal information. Um, you know, the English... And, and really largely Indo-European, past, future, present, and then sometimes progressive, and, and you know, these, these sort of nuances between those tenses uh, really is not the full picture. There's a many other possibilities um, out there for describing events in time. If you are really interested in tense, and, and like I said, it's, it's really quite an interesting uh, subfield, um, to look into, it's it's very logical in, in a lot of ways, much like uh, you know semantics. Um, if you are interested for further reading, um, as always, I, I like the Cambridge uh, series in linguistics. There is a book called simply Tense by Bernard Comrie or Bernard, I believe he goes by Bernard Comrie, um, and it's it's very good and it's very short. It's uh, just a little over a hundred pages. So if you're interested in tense, I would highly recommend reading that. He goes over all of the things I've just talked about, but in much, much better detail than I could possibly do in a podcast like this. Um, so, as always, I welcome questions and comments on Twitter or via email. I've been a little bit slow in responding, but uh, hopefully uh, I'm, I'm, I've got a little bit more time now, so I'll be able to respond uh, better to your, your comments. Um, I've got a couple episodes in the pipeline coming up based on listener suggestions, so uh, expect those coming very soon. And also, like I said, I'm going to readdress that controversy uh, with the computational linguistics episode. Um, hopefully, in the next episode, if I can, if I can get around to finishing reading all those references, I want to come into it at least with a, uh, you know, a, an educated uh, viewpoint to uh, what. Uh, the gentleman on Twitter uh, was uh, saying and the, the issue that he was taking with my comments. Um, so anyway, as always, thank you for listening and I will talk to you guys next time.